Hi everybody and welcome to Create with Tech. So recently I bought a new 3D printer called the Centauri Carbon. It's a great machine and like most printers I found a few mods that make it even better. So this printer is a Core XY printer and it comes with a glass panel that sits on top. But with certain filaments like PLA you actually get better results if you leave that top off so the print stays cooler. So I found a really smart upgrade designed by Julian Mayry that lets you slide the top panel off to the side instead of removing it completely. It's a clever design, really easy to install, and it works perfectly. I'm a big fan of it. But after printing it and pulling it off the plate, I noticed some text etched into the sides. It said, printer and beer. I didn't catch it in the preview, and for some reason, it wasn't obvious to me during the print. But once it was finished, well, there it was. I later realized that Printer and Beer is actually Julian's channel and maker brand, which is awesome. So it totally makes sense that he includes it on his models. That said, it's just not quite the look I'm going for on my own setup. I really appreciate the design, and no offense at all to Julian, but I want to get rid of the text. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove embedded or embossed text like that without modifying the STL file or diving into a CAD program. You can do it right in your slicer. I'll be using Orca Slicer, but the same method works in Prusa Slicer and probably in Cura as well, though I haven't personally tested it on Cura. So if you've ever wanted to clean up a model or get rid of unwanted text, Stick around, I'll show you exactly how to do it. All right, so we're gonna start by bringing in the part uh, into the uh, slicer. And uh, there it is. And we can see the text embedded in the part. And what we wanna do basically is uh, cover up the text. And the way we do this is by generating another part in the slicer. So in uh, Orca Slicer and in Prusa Slicer and other slicers, you can generate a part. Uh, and we do this here by, is by uh, clicking on the part, the part that's on there already, and adding another part. And we're going to add a cube. And we're going to say OK to switch per object setting mode. And what this means is that uh, we're going to see all the parts listed on uh, this uh, window here. All right, so what we need to do now is change the size of the part. We want to change it so that we can cover up the text. So the way we do this is by going to the tools up here and there is a scale tool, we click on that and we wanna make sure that the uniform scale is unchecked. So if you see it like this, you need to uncheck it. And what we wanna do is essentially uh, change the scale of the part so that it will properly cover up the text. So the x-axis we're going to change to one millimeter because the text is probably about uh, one millimeter um, indented into the uh, part. So we'll say one millimeter and then we're going to change the y-axis to uh, 10 millimeters. I did measure uh, it here between uh, this point in this point and it's about uh, 10 millimeters. So I'm going to change uh, the Y axis to uh, 10. So uh, now we need to change the height of the part. So the uh, text in the object is about let's say 75 millimeters. I'm going to just give it a little bit more room so I'll say 100 millimeters. All right so now we have the Part that we created in the slicer, which we're going to use to cover the text. And the way we're going to do this is by uh, grabbing onto the part by uh, using the move tool. So we'll click on the move tool and then we can move the part uh, to wherever we want it placed. All right, so if we zoom in, we can see that the part is not quite uh, in the right place. We can just sort of move it to where we want it. Now, we can eyeball this if we want. We can just uh, 
essentially move the part and try to get it over the text so that it covers it up. Uh, and that can work, um, but it's a little bit fiddly. As you can see, it's very hard to get it right where you want it, right? So there is an easier way to do this. And that is by using uh, the, the calculator and uh, the measuring tool in the slicer. So let's do that. We're going to take the uh, measuring tool. Now we picked the wrong object, so we need to unclick this. We need to go to the main object that we're trying to uh, cover the text on. So I'm going to click on the uh, object that we're working with. And what I want to do is basically measure the distance from here, from here to here. So let's do that. We're going to click on uh, this edge and we're going to click on this edge. And we see here that the distance between here and here is 65 millimeters. So we know um, basically how wide the object is. Okay, so at this point, uh, what we need to do is um, go to the other object, to the cube, and we're going to close the measuring tool because we don't need it anymore. So we're going to go to the cube, and let's just move it out so you can see it. Okay, so there's the, the cube or the object that we created. And what we want to do is um, basically put it at zero coordinates. So let's just do that. So we'll go zero, zero. And actually for the Z, we can just leave it where it is. Uh, actually, let's just put it at zero so that you can see exactly what we're doing. So we're gonna put it at zero. So uh, the uh, object now is at zero um, coordinates. So, okay, what we want to do now is basically uh, get our trusty calculator. And we know that the distance between here and here is 65. So we're going to do a very simple math calculation. We'll take 65 and we'll divide that by 2 and we'll get 32.5. So 32.5 is an, an important number here. Just remember 32.5. So at this point, what we want to do is we want to take this object and basically position it in the X direction at 32.5. So as you can see, it moves to where the text is. Now, I can tell already that it's not going to cover the text, but what I would suggest is that if we move it another half a millimeter, it will probably cover the text. So let's just try that. We'll change it from 32.5 to 33. And lo and behold, the text is covered and it seems to be absolutely perfect. And it's so easy to do, right? Very, very easy. Now we can just shift it over a little bit because I think it's not 100% covering but if we put it right at the center more or less it will cover uh, the text and if we slice the object like so we can see that lo and behold there is no more text it's done now before you leave it uh, what you need to do is export this new uh, object with the text removed as an STL and you do this by going to this menu here, uh, highlighting the object, right-clicking, and exporting as one STL. And then you'll have uh, one STL without the text. Uh, and you can use that to uh, print the object. Uh, if you need to print it again, you can just use the STL that you created without the text. Okay, so that's how you remove the text from an object where the text is etched into the object. But how about if the text is em uh, embossed? How do you remove it then? Well, I'm going to show you that now. Okay, so the way we remove uh, an embossed text is very similar to the way we removed the etched text with some minor differences. So let's get rid of this 
object, first of all. And I made a simple embossed object that I'm going to bring onto the plate. So as you can see, this is an object that says delete me. And um, instead of, of et being etched, it's embossed. So what we need to do, first of all, is repeat what we did previously. We need to create an object. But instead of creating a part, uh, we're going to create a negative part. So a negative part basically deletes or erases anything that it comes in contact with. So we're going to use a cube as we did before. And we're going to say OK to this. We're going to take the uh, negative part, which is kind of transparent, as you can see. And we're going to bring it up so that it covers the embossed text, more or less. So there we go. Uh, we'll move it to the center here. And um, what we need to do now is basically make sure that this edge of the negative part meets the edge of the part with the embossed text. So we're going to use uh, some calculation again. So the first thing that we need to do is find out how tall the part with the text is. So we're going to click on it. And we're going to go to the scale tool. And we know by looking at the Z axis that this object here is 21.87 millimeters tall. So that is a very important number because what we're going to do now is shift to the generic cube that we made. So we'll click on that and we'll go to the move part and we will move it to 20. What was the number again? Let me just check that out. Uh, so the number was 21.87. So we need to move this object to 21.87. I'm going to click on this object. And I'm going to go to move. And I'm going to put 21.87 in the Z axis. 21.87. And we'll click on that. And as you can see, the negative part is exactly meeting uh, the top of the part with the embossed uh, text. Now, if we slice it this way, you'll see that the text is gone where the negative part meets the object with the text. But we, of course, we want to remove the entire text. So what we need to do is we'll go back, we'll click on the negative part, and we will scale it. And we can just do that manually. We'll just go like this, and it will cover the text. And we can slice it again. And there it is. It's gone. Easy peasy. And of course, what we're going to do now is simply uh, right click on it and we'll export it as one STL. And we've got uh, an object without the text. All right. So I just want to share with you what uh, this looks like with uh, the uh, print and um, then show you what it looks like after I removed the etched printer and beer uh, slogan. Uh, but before I show you what it looks like uh, without the slogan, I just want to say thank you to Julian Mary for uh, doing this design. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I hope you don't take any offense by me removing uh, your slogan from the part. Um, the thing is, I'm not much of a beer drinker. And uh, if my friends come over and they see this on the part, they're really going to wonder. So um, no offense meant I really like the design and uh, I appreciate it uh, very, very much that you that you made this. OK, having said that, let's uh, look at what it uh, looks like with without the actual print on it. So as you can see, it looks very good. Uh, no sign of uh, the text and no CAD uh, design or CAD knowledge required. A simple um, tool in the slicer 
uh, we'll do it for you and we'll do a really good job. And that's it. Quick and dirty, but it gets the job done. This kind of thing used to take some serious CAD skills, but now you can handle it right in the slicer. If you found this helpful, give it a like, drop a comment, and consider subscribing to Create With Tech for more videos about making, tinkering, and everything in between. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.